Well, hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Something quick and dirty in today's episode. For those who are new to the channel, I actually own the Super Duke R, the new one for 2020. But I broke that last weekend on a trip away, so that is in a workshop getting repaired, which I'm on the way to pick up now. And they have loaned me the KTM 890R to have a bit of a play on. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to make a quick video on this bike to see what I think about it. So if you are interested in a sort of mid-range thumper, then stay tuned I'll see you in a bit. You've done that proper good, pal. So KTM's all new sort of mid-range bike for 2020 is the 890R, which is kind of um, a step forward or a step up from the 790R which they produced last year. I'm kind of not, I don't really know why KTM have done it to be honest, I can't understand it. Obviously the 690 they've stopped making that and they produced the 790 but shortly after they brought out the 890. Um, so I'm not sure how the 790 is going to sit after uh, looking at the sales on this bike because you do get a lot more for your money on, on this bike, the 890R. Just for example, on the 790, it doesn't have adjustable suspension. This does. Obviously, this is nearing the 900cc mark, so you automatically get a bit more power, a bit more torque. So the power is about 119 brake horsepower, which is up on the 790, and it has 99 newton meters of torque. So an absolute weapon of a machine that doesn't weigh very much. I'm not exactly sure how much it does weigh, but it's probably around the 800 or 800, the 180 kilogram mark. I will fire that up on screen. This comes with an electronics package on the bike, so you've got three riding modes which we're all pretty familiar with now in 2020, a lot of bikes are coming with rider modes, so we've, I think we've got sport, street and rain. Obviously each individual mode um, is a kind of a preset, depends how much traction control you get, depends how much ABS, throttle mapping etc etc, which can be even more sort of customed and tuned if you buy the track pack. Now that does cost extra as does the quick shifter and downblifter on this bike. I really don't know why KTM are, are doing this now. It's the same on the 1290R that I have. You have to buy everything on top. So you, you fork out enough money as it is, and then if you want a quick shifter and all some Gucci bits, then you have to bloody dip that bit further into your bloody wallet to get all the fun stuff. So with the track pack you'd probably get an extra riding mode, it's probably the track mode which allows you to um, customise your settings that much further so you can really sort of dial in how much ABS you want, how much catch and control, all your sort of throttle mappings etc but that's all a bit, a bit too technical. Now this is very much so a fun bike to ride, it's a small bike, it's a very narrow bike although the tank sort of splays out quite, quite a bit. There isn't much bike between your legs, it's actually fairly narrow uh, here um, at the front. So if you are a shorter rider, um, you'd probably get on with this very well because it doesn't affect the ride height at all. For me being six foot two, I'm about 14 stone, I feel a bit daft on this. Um, well, I don't know, maybe borderline. Um, it's quite a small bike, and if you're a sort of bigger sort of gentleman like myself, I don't know, I think oh, it's okay, but kind of feels a bit small, but on the plus side, you can lob this thing about all over the gaff. I'd happily take this on a track or on a set of bends. And this, to be honest, this is probably faster than a 12 night yard in a good set of twisties. So if you're looking for a sort of a mid-range bike and you're not interested in touring on the thing, and you just want a, a bit of a weapon to smash around the twisties, throw it on your trailer, ride down to the Alps, ride a few passes and then bugger off home, this would be an option for you. Ignore the bloody TFT dash, it looks like somebody smashed it, but I think there's a, I think there's some sort of protective guard on the front of that that's uh, given up the ghost. See there, it's changing screen, so you've got your daytime and nighttime TFT display. Fairly basic, uh, the display gives you obviously your engine temperature, fuel range, your gear selector, speedo, rev counter, etc. Tells you what uh, what mode you're in, so we're in road and all the good normal stuff, your fuel range, trips, trip one, outside temperature, and your clock. But as I said, fairly basic. Well, that's probably being unfair. It's not basic at all, but slightly less than what you get on the 1290R. But obviously that costs you a stanger more on money. 
Switch gear is fairly basic and standard. On the right hand side all you've got is your um, kill switch and your starter for the for the engine. On the left hand side you've just got your various, which I was used on my GT, four, four arrows which you can navigate in your um, settings menu on the TFT display. Your indicators and horn and your sort of uh, high beam lights etc that is pretty much you so no heated grips no traction control or anything like that on this machine but you wouldn't really need it it's not nice one you absolute bell end switch key isn't backlit on this one and all around i think on the bike you've got led indicators and headlights so leds all around no need to carry any spareage with regards to bulbs mirrors pig ugly but uh, they work they're nice and big you can see behind you so that is the main point but they would have to go for some nice bar enders for me uh, seat and comfort absolutely shocking I've sat on more comfortable blocks of wood than this seat so that would have to go I don't know why I think that's kind of a sort of KTM have kept that in mind let's, let's chuck a really rubbish uncomfortable seat on it to sort of encourage people to buy the power parts comfort seat um, I don't know, that is rock hard and that, I don't know, half an hour and you'd be pretty much baggage on this. On this particular bike on the rear seat there's a sort of a seat cowling on there but you can get a pillion seat I think which comes with the bike and you can then um, if you wanted to get rid of that and just stick a cowling on top if you ride on your Todd. Probably wouldn't want to ride two up on this to be honest, it's a fairly small bike but it is possible, pegs are there, seat is there if you so wish. No idea what size fuel tank is on this, I'll stick that up on screen. As I said this is a very short ride, I, I picked this bike up yesterday so I've only been out on this a second time so I haven't researched it, it's just a cool, quick and dirty what I think about the bike. So yeah, as I said before, fully adjustable suspension on this WP suspension which you don't get on the 790 so that's a nice extra touch and as I said before I really don't get what KTM have done uh, with this 890, 790 sort of or 690 trio and as I said the 690 is now stopped they're not building that anymore and then they produced the 790 but if you were to get a basic 790 I don't know I'd spend that it's probably not much more for the 890 and you get a lot more bike for your money now if you were just wanting to spend little cash um, and you weren't bothered about the you know the extras that the 890 gives you okay you could get the 790 but if you were looking to buy a sort of mid-range bike and throw throw some money at it with some extras then you're better off getting the 890R and then chucking a bit more on it your quick shifter your down blipper the trap package etc you're going to get more bike for your money you're getting more power um, yeah I really don't understand what KTM have done with that and it used to be that if you got for example a 690 standard 690 you'd pay whatever price it was but if you bought like the 690R then the R model would come with all the extras on it like the quick shifter and all that sort of gubbins you buy now the 890R or even the 1290R and it's coming with nothing on it and then you're having to ply more money out of your wallet to get the um, to get it how you want it to get some niceties on there to put a bit of extras on there normally or it used to be that when you bought, bought the R that the R model would come with everything on it and I think even on the 690R you got an Acra, Acra exhaust on there you got a bit of carbon quick shifter etc but now they're selling you the R and it's still basic it's just just called the R okay this has got the uh, adjustable suspension over the 790 but that's it I really don't understand where KTM are going with this it's obviously a bit of a money making uh, thing but I had the same on my 1290 I had to um, uh, get the quick shifter on the down blipper I had to order that on top and now since my bike has gone in for its repair I've ordered um, heated grips that didn't come on the bike either so I've had to um, add them because last weekend I almost died heated grips is definitely a must Yeah, but I don't like where KTM are going with that, all the extras business. Um, and it's not cheap either. On the 1290, I think it was nearly 400 bucks for the quick shifter and down blipper. And it's like, it's something ridiculous on top of that for the track package. I think for the quick shifter, down blipper and track package, you nearly grand out of pocket. Just for some software. And what's even more annoying is the bikes come already set up for the quick shifter, down blipper, etc. All they have to do 
slap it onto the laptop and unlock it. So they don't even have to add or put anything on the bike. It's already on there. You're just paying them to slap it onto a laptop. Boom. There's your quick shifter. Now the one thing I would say about this bike, if you were thinking about getting it and you did want to go on longer rides with it and you wanted to slap some luggage on it, you're pretty much, uh, pretty much not going to get much luggage that's going to go on this. Any sort of tail bag or any um, sort of overslung cargo bags that I use because um, of the exhaust is so high up. It's pretty much just beside the passenger seat. So any sort of bag or any roll bag that you put on the back seat that hangs over slightly, it's going to touch the exhaust straight away. So you're going to burn burn whatever luggage you put on that. So that is a bit disappointing, but you know that's not what this that's not what this bike's designed for. But that's something to think about. If you were wanting to put any sort of luggage on the rear seat, probably not going to work. KTM have really upped their game with the quick shifters. Need for 2020 on the Super Car. What a brilliant quick shifter and blipper that is, and that is exactly the same on this bike. Butter smooth, just stamp up and down the gearbox, no clutch needed. Hours, hours of fun. But all in all, a fantastic mid-range or mid-weight bike. So much fun with so much punch and power. These V-twins from KTM, they pack so much grunt. There's nothing out there on the market that gives you so much low-down torque than these, uh, than these KTMs. Of course, this isn't a V-twin. <laughs> So there she is, the 890R. Pretty pretty good looking bike, I would say. Loving the colour scheme. I think you can only get it in this colour, which is the black, white and orange. I don't think there's any other um, paint jobs there, but I could be wrong. There you can see what I'm talking about, the rear sort of arse end. Joking aside from the hideous tail at the end, that would definitely have to go. But if you were to put any luggage on this whatsoever, then whatever hangs over here is going to go straight onto your exhaust. So that is probably out of the question if you're thinking about getting uh, one of these and you want to put some luggage on it. As I said before, this will come off and you get a rear pillion seat. But, you know, the, with the exhaust being what it is, uh, it's pretty high up. You're not going to get much luggage on there unless you go aftermarket, get something fairly short, um, then you could possibly do that. Brembo brakes all round, forgot to mention that before, and they are really powerful. Probably probably overpowered, to be honest. It's probably too much for this bike, but still, she stops on a dime. Quick look from the front. As I said before, it's a very small, very narrow bike, but that just makes for more fun. So much power, so much grunt on a little bike that you can just chuck around all over the gaff. Absolutely fantastic. So there you go, there she is. So that is it for today's video, sort of a quick and dirty first thoughts of what I think about the KTM 890R. If you are new to the channel and you enjoy what you saw, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon note next to the subscribe button to make sure you're notified every time I upload a video. I've got everything covered on this channel from test rides, product reviews, touring videos, track days, we've got it all happening on this channel. I try to produce content once every week. For all you regulars and even the newbies, make sure you hit that like button, comments down below. It really does help the channel grow, grow so don't forget to do that. And let's have a chat in the comments about what you think about this bike or what any points that you might think that I've missed that perhaps should have been covered. Until next time, take care, ride safe, and I will see you in the next one.